Welcome back to the armory, and today we're off-roading. Earlier this year, we took Maddie to dirt bike training, where they gave her this little 50cc dirt bike, all the safety gear, and trained her how to ride a bike. By the end, she was off-roading on a dirt bike at four. Now, super proud dad moment, but while I was watching, I really wanted to jump in there and ride with her. Now, I could just get on a dirt bike and go for a drive, but this is the armory. That's not what we do here. So, we're going to take Frank the Tank. <laughs> who's a very large, very heavy off-road robot. And we're gonna go for some comfort. We're gonna strap a lazy boy right on top and we're gonna go for some autonomous driving off-road. Well, it's certainly taller than I thought it was. It's still pretty comfy. It's super important to make sure to test your systems multiple times as you're putting them together. So, I'm gonna go get a snack. So mechanically, the robot seems to be able to drive around just fine with a controller. It seems stable, though it doesn't really feel like it. And I think that's just because I'm so high up that even small movements feel really big up where I am. But I wasn't able to tip it, and I did kind of try. And the next step is autonomy, and that freaks me out. I've spent my whole career trying to stay away from robots when they're running on their own. So to actually climb on top of one when it's running gives me the willies. So that's the next step. Wish me luck. To make this thing drive around on its own, we have a lot of different pieces that we have to put together. The first one is this Z2i from Stereo Labs. Now this is very similar to the Z2, except 
It comes with a little bit nicer mounting, a, a changeable USB cord, which is nice. But most importantly, it comes with these polarizing lenses. So that makes it so that it avoids glare from things like the sun. So it's harder to blind this sensor when you're driving around in sunny conditions like we will be. So that's awesome. We're also going to be putting on this 2D LiDAR from Hokuyo. Now this is just an extra sensor, it's just a laser rangefinder that we can also use when navigating around, just a little bit of, you know, extra safety. This is also not safety rated though, so not really safety, but more safety. To power it all, we're going to be using this 12 volt power supply from Meanwell that we're going to be running just directly off of the robot itself. I've already wired up this little house outlet thing here to the 12 volts uh, and we're going to use that to actually power the light that's sitting on the side table. For electricians that are looking at this and cringing, I'm sorry. To run all of this, we're going to be using our Jetson Orin. This is a very small, very powerful Edge AI computer. Now the most important sensor of this entire setup is actually this GQ7 from MicroStrain. I used this in the Fritter video, but I did kind of gloss over it a little bit in that video. This thing is absolutely amazing for doing outdoor navigation. It has a tactical grade IMU inside it, so it knows exactly where it's moving, even though it can't see. It also has two GPS antennas that it can use to know where this whole thing is, and because you're using two, you can tell the orientation of the robot. You can tell not only where it is, but where it's pointing, and that's really important when doing outdoor navigation. The third thing that it has is this RTK module. What this will do is it'll actually talk to cell towers and start to get what are called RTK corrections streamed to it just over cell networks. So, you, so I don't need to set up any sort of a base station. I can pretty much be anywhere and be getting super accurate RTK corrections for my GPS. This system altogether already has all of that data fused internally. So it's taking the GPS coordinates that have already been corrected by RTK, it's taking all that data and the super IMU that's inside of this and giving you really good localization and odometry. If you end up driving too close to a tree or a building or something like that and you lose your GPS signals, that's not actually a huge deal because the IMU inside of this is still keeping track of exactly where you've moved. So even if you have periods of GPS blindness, your robot will not get lost and will still know exactly where it's gone. And that is amazing coming from a single sensor. So we need to get all of this strapped on and powered up, and then we're gonna move on to the software. The Jetson Orin knows where it is within a centimeter, thanks to the GQ7. When you drive it around, you can record all the positions that you went through on that path, and you can play them back later. When the robot is actually navigating around, it's always planning two moves ahead, just to make sure that it's a nice, consistent, smooth motion and doesn't stop. To make sure it doesn't run into anything, we're using the 2D LiDAR and the point cloud from the Z camera to make a local obstacle map. This is everything around it that it can see, but doesn't want to hit. If the robot sees an obstacle in its way, it'll replan the path around that obstacle, still trying to get to the GPS point. If the GQ7 loses GPS signal, its internal IMU should take over. But as an added layer of odometry, we're using the visual odometry from the Z camera, which looks at how the video stream is moving and can estimate how the camera is moving. Put all this together and you have a robot that can navigate around the world without running into anything or getting lost. All the programming for this is done using a framework called ROS. It's a great framework for actually doing any sort of robotics development. For anyone who wants to have a look at the code, it'll all be linked down in the description. Tomorrow's the big day. Everything's all set up and working, so I think it's time that both Frank and I get a little rest.
This is my favorite project so far. It used a bunch of really powerful sensors and was a lot of fun to test. If you like this video or others like it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to keep an eye on what we're up to in the background, make sure to check out our Instagram. I'll put the link somewhere. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I am very impressed with how rugged Frank is. I've only had it for a few months, but those who know me know that I'm very hard on my hardware. I've flipped it over, I've run it into things, and Frank just keeps on trucking. I haven't had to, be, had to replace any hardware, fix anything. It just sort of works. So that definitely gets Dave's thumbs up of approval. And along with that award that I just made up, we also have shirts. If you really like Frank as much as we do, Visit shop.davesarmory.com and you can get your own.